It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. That's in the northeast of London. And I'm also the founder of the Tree of Life family of churches. Right now, at the time of recording this message, we have 10 churches in the UK. I say right now because we're planting new churches all the time. We planted four new churches in the last 12 months. We've gone from six churches to 10 churches. And our goal is by the end of 2023 to have 20 locations. Maybe not all of them will be fully functioning churches, but there'll be places in the UK where we are having meetings and we are having church. If you live in the UK and you're looking for a great church, you need a church to go to, you're not part of a church, you want to be involved, get involved. Go to tree.church slash locations and get involved. Now, I've been teaching about healing for the last few weeks. This will be week four of our series called Learning Healing from the Master. And just before I get teaching today, I just want to plug to you to, to promote um, my latest book. Now, we called it The Healing Book, The Healing Book, because, well, you know, I had a number of different titles for it, but when I was writing it, people were asking me all the time, is The Healing Book going to come out? Is The Healing Book ready yet? Now, that book is available at tree.church slash books. And when you go to tree.church slash books, you'll see all the books we have available. Scroll down and find the healing book. And uh, I think it costs about 20 pounds, okay? And you might think 20 pounds is a lot for a book. This book is over 400 pages of teaching on healing. It's a 40-day daily devotional on healing. It's got links to videos, and uh, it's also got activities to do, things that you can do that will help you see yourself healed. Now, how this book was written, let me just tell you a little bit about this book. Um, we had a situation in our church, in our churches, throughout some of our churches, we had a lot of people suddenly get sick all at once, and all sorts of serious things as well, not just a little cold or flu, but really serious things that life-threatening. So I said, for the next 40 days, I'm going to send a daily email to everyone in my church about healing. And I would get up every morning, I'd pray in tongues for probably about an hour, and then I'd take about another hour, so it took about two hours of my day, to one hour of praying and one hour of writing, and I'd write these emails on healing. And um, so... We saw some people healed when I wrote them, and it was all good. And I just really forgot about it. Then about a year or two after I did that, a lady came to me and she said, I would really like to give testimony in the church one Sunday about my healing. I said, of course. So she got up a few Sundays later, and she shared about her healing. Now, what happened was that she had um, over 300, I'm not exaggerating here, over 300 growths in her liver. And the doctors told her, basically, it's game over for you. Your life is over. This is the end. And so she had these 300 growths in her liver. She was told she was going to die. And she went back to those healing emails. She'd saved them. And she started reading them every day. And by the end of 40 days of reading those emails, every single one of those growths was gone. She was given a clean bill of health. She's completely healed. She's still in our church today. She's still very much alive. She's still very much blessed. Now, within all of that, she said, while giving her testimony, these emails should become a book. Now, my eldest son, who's the director of our media, and so if you're watching this on TV anywhere else other than the UK, he has been the one who's converted that program to the right specs, and he's made you get it, so thank him. Okay, he works for us. He's paid staff. And my eldest son, he is a proofreader by um, training, by experience. He said, Dad, you know, he's, he's a writer as well. He's got some of his own books. He's, he's a very gifted young man. And he said, Dad, um, I would like to take those emails and, and turn it into a book, and I'll get it published. And so he did all of that, and now it's done, Okay. And so that book is actually, um, we've sold out of it twice now. So we need to get some more in. But if you order from that link, they will actually print it direct and send it straight to you. And uh, you'll have that book, 40 daily devotions, what to do, how to get healed, how to receive your healing, all the activities, links to the videos, everything in there. So it's not just a book, it's a whole healing course, really. They'll help you get your healing because Jesus Christ wants you well. So this is actually our fourth week talking about learning healing from the master, learning healing from the master. And our first week we looked at the leper who was healed and we found out that Jesus Christ wants you well. That was our first truth. Our second truth was with the centurion, healing his voice activated, healing his voice activated. And then we were looking at Matthew 9 last week 
and we found out that healing parallels forgiveness. And we saw this man, this man with the palsy, couldn't move his arms, couldn't move his legs, and he was healed because he understood that forgiveness and healing are linked. And we talked about that link. So today we're going to keep looking at this. And what I want us to get today is, is what I call the four-step healing process. The four-step healing process. And the four steps, really simple, can't make any simpler. They're hear, say, do, and tell. Hear, say, do, and tell. And so if you follow this four-step process, and it's all over the Bible, hear, say, do, and tell, you will receive your healing. It's that simple. Okay, so let's have a look. There's actually two healings in this. It's a two for one bonus. Matthew takes two stories because they happen exactly the same time and he weaves them together and we can actually learn from both of them, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that, Matthew. So let's start at Matthew 9 and verse 18. Okay, while he spake these things to them. So while Jesus is teaching the crowds, he's teaching a message. He's actually answering a question on fasting, but that's irrelevant. Why well, do say these things to them? Behold, there came a certain ruler. So this guy is a ruler, he's a leader, and he's actually, we find out in other um, books, his name's Jairus, and he is a leader of a synagogue. He's a religious leader. And a certain ruler worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay hands on her, and she shall live. So my daughter's dead, but if you pray for her, she's going to live. Okay, now, <coughs> actually at this point, the daughter wasn't dead, but she was as good as. Okay, that's, you know, I've never actually raised the dead. Okay. Half my family have raised the dead. My wife has, and two of my four children have. I've never raised the dead. I've never been in that position. And part of that reason is because I often arrive too early. But I've seen two or three people raised from being as good as dead. The doctor said, you'll be dead by morning. You'll be dead in a few hours. And I've prayed for them and watched them completely recover. So at this moment, she's not actually dead. And you can find that in other gospels. But she's as good as dead. And he said, but if you lay hands on her, she'll be healed. So Jesus got up and followed him as did his disciples. Imagine that, Jesus teaching away, he's answering questions, it's like a church meeting. Like one day, I imagine being in church one Sunday, and the, the preacher's in the middle of his sermon, and somebody just walks up to him, goes, I run the church across the road, I, I run another church, but my daughter's really sick, can you come pray for her? And the pastor just follows the other pastor right at the church, and you're just sitting there, oh. You know, that, that, I, I personally, I would have and follow. I, that happened to me once, actually. I was in uh, Eastern Europe, and uh, I was in the middle of teaching, and someone went up to me and said, my mother is dying, will you come pray for my mother? And so I just followed out the church. I don't know what to do, I just followed. And so half the church government followed me, and we went down the road and walked down the road. It wasn't far, it was only a few hundred yards, and we got there, and I prayed for the mother, and the mother was in bed, she couldn't get out of bed, and I said, you're healed in the name of Jesus, get out of bed in Jesus' name. And she shouted at me, in, in, uh, I think it was Bulgaria, maybe it was Albania, I can't even remember what happened, I think it was Bulgaria, and she shouted at me, and... Um, I, I like the door, translate to English, please. And so basically the translation was, I know I'm healed, the pain's gone, I know I can get out of bed, but I'm going to close on. And I'm not getting out of bed in just my under, un, underclothes. So we all left the house, she got dressed and came to church. Okay? And it was just funny, when I started following the pastor out the road, everyone started following me. You know, we need a bit more adventure in our lives. We need a bit more adventure in church. And there's an adventure going on here. Jesus is teaching, this guy comes up and goes, I run the synagogue, my door's about to die, please come and help. And Jesus gets up and her. Man, that's how we should be. We see someone sick, go up and get ministering to them. Uh, you don't need a word from heaven. You don't need to hear a big spooky voice, pray for that person now. You know, it's not like the Ten Commandments, Moses. No, you don't need any of that. You just need to know there's someone sick. Okay, I'm going to go and pray for them then. I, I, I only don't go and pray for someone if I hear a booming voice. Otherwise, my default is go. I got a phone call in the middle of the night once, 2 a.m., from one of my elders. And my elder said, I've got a friend phoned me and their daughter's in hospital and she's dying. I said, I'm up, I'm going. And it's two o'clock in the morning, I'm praying in tongues to wake myself up and I'm shooting up, and I'm getting all ready to go and I'm getting dressed. And as I'm praying in tongues and getting dressed to go to the hospital at two in the morning to pray for a dying child, God speaks to me and says, don't go. I mean, I wasn't waiting for a go. I don't need to hear a go. I just go. Okay? The Bible says go, so I just go. But God said, don't go. And I was like, I rebuke you, Satan. Why would God not want me to go and pray for a child to be healed? That's not God. But I know God. I know the voice of God. I've been listening to the voice of God for years. I knew it was God speaking. So I phoned my elder back and I said, listen, God just spoke to me and said, I can't go. I don't know why, but I can't go. And so she said to me, if you're not going, I'm going. And she went and she prayed and the girl was completely healed. And you see, how many of you know that would have been better for her to see that miracle than me? Because I see a lot of miracles. And so I was really excited. I was really pleased that had happened. And the family started coming to church. They were Hindus and they got born again and became Christians. Glory to God. And I was just so glad that my elder was going. And you know, sometimes, you know, but the point of what I'm saying is this, I don't need to go. I just go. I didn't wake up in the, the middle of the night and go, shall I go and pray for this person or not? I just go. 
And unless God tells me don't go, my default is go. But most Christians, their default is stop. They assume that everything's a red light unless God says it's green. No, assume a green light and go. If God wants you not to go, he will let you not go. You can see that in the book of Acts. Paul says, I went here to preach. God says, no, keep going. So I went there to preach and eventually ends up in Macedonia, first church ever planted in Europe. He meets Luke and Luke and Paul's this divine connection that really changes the world. And Luke writes Luke and Acts. And so it's amazing, that divine connection. But Paul wasn't sitting at home waiting for God to tell him to go to Macedonia. He was on his way to preach somewhere when God told him to go to Macedonia. And so you need to treat every light like a green light. And uh, if you get a red light, stop. But don't treat every light like a red light. Just sit there and wait for God to call you. Oh, God, I'm just waiting for me. You understand what I'm saying here? Go. So Jesus just treats life as a green light. My, my, my daughter's sick. She's nearly dead. I'm going. Someone tells you, hey, my daughter's sick. She's nearly dying. Okay, let's go to her house. Let me pray. Well, I've never seen that happen before. Maybe she's never gone before. Maybe you need to start going, start praying, start stepping out in faith. So, Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. I love that. Well, we're going to watch Jesus do a miracle. Let's do it. Let's get involved. You know, if you're part of a, if you're part of a ministry and you know the minister's getting the sick healed on a regular basis, next time, say, the next time you're going to go and see someone get healed, can I come with? Can I be your disciple? Can I watch? And can I get involved? You know, don't just say, well, I'm a disciple and just sit there. No, you're a disciple of Jesus. Get involved. Do what Jesus did. So the disciples came and followed him. Behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched him with his garment. So we all know, you know, from the other gospels, the whole crowd here. And so this woman, she's sick. And she comes up behind him and she touches him. For she said, she said, she said, she said, 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 said say, that's one of my four things, hear, say, do and tell. She said within herself, if I can just touch his garment, I shall be made whole. That's what she said. But then Jesus turned, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, let's just press pause on Jairus' daughter for a minute, and let's look at this woman. And these are the four elements I want to talk to you about. Hear, say, do, and tell. Okay? If you want to be healed from your sickness, you want to see other people healed from the sickness, remember these four words in this order. Hear, say, do, tell. The first thing this woman did was hear. Now, that's sort of off camera, so to speak, in this Bible story. We don't know how she heard. We do know she did hear. Someone must have told her about Jesus. There's no way she'd have just known who he was and known that if she touched his garment, she'd be healed. Maybe one of her friends came around her house and told her how they were healed. Maybe someone came around and told them how their friend was healed. But somebody told her Jesus Christ was the healer. She had to have heard it. Faith comes by hearing. And Jesus said she was healed by her faith. So where did that faith come from? It came from hearing. So although the hearing's off camera here, we know that she must have heard. She must have heard from somebody about Jesus. The reason that so many people are not coming to church, they're not coming to Jesus for their healing, they're not coming to Jesus for their miracle, all these tough things are happening in our nation and everyone's turning everywhere but Jesus is because we are not telling people and because we don't tell, they don't hear. How can they believe if no one tells them? That's what Paul writes to the Romans. How can people become Christians if we don't tell them about Christ? We have to tell people. And people want to hear about Jesus. It is a lie. It is a satanic, evil, fleshly, carnal, stupid lie that people in the UK are not interested in Jesus. We had Riley Stevenson from Texas come to our church and uh, he, he actually came and preached in six of our churches in one week. Man, we, we had a real intense pace. It was meeting after meeting. And every day after we preached, we took a team out in the middle of the day on the streets of six different towns in the UK. And every day we saw dozens of people born again. People want to hear about Jesus. At one stage, Riley prayed with a whole gang, maybe about 14 to 16 teenagers, and they all prayed the prayer, and they all became Christians all at once as he started to pray with them. It was powerful, okay? Because people in this country want to know about Jesus. The problem isn't the hearing. The problem is there's not enough telling going on. So we need to tell people, and I'm so glad. I don't know, you know, when I get to heaven, and I'm going there because I'm born again, I'm going to meet this woman with the issue of blood. I say, hey, you're the woman with the issue of blood. She goes, not anymore. I've been healed for, for uh, thousands of years. I don't know why they keep calling me that. You know, and there's Doubting Thomas going, they keep calling me Doubting Thomas. I went out and planted churches all over India. I was a man of faith. I had one moment of doubt, I got Doubting Thomas. And, you know, it's amazing how we call these people different things. And I'm the first thing I say, well, what's your name then, woman, the issue of blood? Maybe she's called Mary. Maybe she's called Miriam. Maybe she's called something different. I don't know. Okay? Maybe she's called Phoebe. I don't know what she's called. Okay? So she's got a name. She says, that's my name. I say, I'd love to know. Who told you about Jesus? 
How did you hear? I'd love to know. And introduce me to the person who told you. That would be fun. Anyway, she was told. So she heard. That's number one, hear. People need to hear the good news that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Jesus Christ can forgive all your sins, heal all your diseases, change your life. He is the good shepherd. He'll lead you to green pastures, still waters. He'll prepare a feast for you in the presence of your enemies. He's a good God and goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Someone told her about Jesus. So she heard. Then she said, now this is very much on camera. Okay, this is here, right here in the Bible, Matthew 9, 21, she said, she said. Remember what we said when we talked about um, the centurion a couple of weeks ago? Healing is voice activated, okay? Healing is voice activated activated. And if you haven't heard that program, go to tree.church slash YouTube and uh, all these programs will be there. You can listen to them and you can get the whole series of learning how to heal from the master free of charge. Just sit there and watch them and you're more than welcome to do that. Now look, look at it here. She said within herself, so she's not talking to you. She's not talking to me. She's not talking to anyone else. She said to herself, oi, self, listen, sometimes you have to talk to yourself as a Christian. I know people say, talk to yourself is crazy. Well, it depends what you're saying. It depends what you're saying. Well, people who talk to trees are crazy. Jesus talked to a fig tree. Jesus talked to a storm. People say, I'm crazy because I used to talk to my car. So you will work in the name of Jesus. You, praise God, I've got a new car now. I don't need to talk to it. It just comes on. But I had a car once. You need to talk to that car. It needed to have a word with it. It needed you to pray in tongues and talk to it. But this woman, she said to herself, within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. That's what she said. If I touch him, I'll be whole. So she heard about Jesus the healer. Then she said, she spoke out loud. She declared, if I touch him, I'll be healed. Then she did it. Hear, say, do. She went and touched his garment. She didn't just sit in her living room and go, if I touch Jesus, I'll be healed. If I touch Jesus, I'll be healed. If I touch Jesus, I'll be healed. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Hallelujah. She got, blah, blah, blah. No, she actually went and did it. She actually did it. Faith has to have a corresponding action, doesn't it? Faith that works is dead. Faith should have some oomph to it. So her faith, if I touch him, I'll be healed. Well, I believe it. I'm going to do it. Okay? I know people who say, I believe it, uh, you know, if I do this, I'll be healed. Well, do it then. But it's difficult. But it's hard. Just do it. Just do it. Just do what God tells you to do. I believe if I do this, God will provide the money. We hired this huge theater um, when Andrew Womack came and preached for us. cost us thousands and thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of pounds, actually. And you know what? The money came in. Because I knew God said. I heard it. I heard God say. So I said it. We're going to hire that place. And we're going to have a great meeting. And God's going to be in that meeting. And we're going to have a great service. And we're going to pack the place. Guess what? We did it. We heard it, we said it, we did it. You hear Jesus Christ wants you well. You hear by his stripes you're healed. You hear healing is the children's bread. You hear he's the Lord your healer. So you say it, the Lord is my healer. And I'm going to jump up right now and declare that I'm healed and I'm going to receive my healing. I'm going to go for a walk right now and my legs aren't going to be sore. I'm going to go and eat this right now and everything's going to be fine. We're, we've got a young man, he's now one of our pastors. I say young, he's, he's, he's younger than I am. How you know, as you get a bit older, your definition of what young is changes. But this, this, this guy... And uh, he had uh, all sorts of food allergies, couldn't eat cheese, couldn't eat chocolate. I was preaching on healing New Year's Eve service a few years ago. He believed it, he received it, he went and he ate, and he's fine now. And he's eating whatever he likes, and he's healed. And that's awesome, and glory to God. Okay, I've seen that happen several times. But you've got to hear it, you've got to say it, you've got to declare it, and then you've got to go and do it. You've got to do what God tells you to do. And so she went and touched his garment, and then she was healed. Hear, say, do. But I didn't say hear, say, do, and stop. I said hear, say, do, tell, because look what happens next. Daughter, be of good comfort. So again, Jesus is, again, like last week, like the guy with the, 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 guy with the, the paralyzed man, like last week, he said, son, son. Maybe that was two weeks ago. But it was the paralyzed man who they let him through the roof. Jesus said, son. He says to this woman, daughter. In other words, this is family. You're part of God's family. God loves you. God's on your side. God cares for you. God's looking after you. Now look what happens here. Jesus turned about, and when he said to her, he said, daughter. Hey, daughter, your family. Be of good comfort. Be of good cheer. Cheer up. Your faith has made you whole. What you believed, what you heard, what you said, faith is in the heart and in the mouth, and what you did, faith with corresponding actions, it has made you well. You're now healed. And the woman was made whole from that hour. She was made completely whole right there and then. But what should she have to go and do then? Well, she must have done it to somebody, at least Matthew, she must have told somebody. 
and then the process begins again because her telling would be someone else's hearing and then they can say and they can do and they can tell and their telling becomes someone else's hearing and they can say and they can do and receive their healing and then they can tell and then they're so I don't know where you are in this process right now maybe this is the first time you've heard about healing so you're at the hearing stage well now you have to say something by stripes I'm healed I believe I'm healed I believe I touch his garment I'll be healed I believe I go to tree of life this Sunday I'll be healed and you come to tree of life and you get healed I believe if this happens this happens whatever's in your heart to say say it and then as you say it do it and as you do it you will be healed and now you're healed what you've got to do tell people the reason we've got this healing book out is because someone told people. She told people that her, her, her growth had disappeared. She told people that her liver had been healed. She told people the word that she'd listened to. She heard the word, she said it, she did it, and then she told others. And so maybe you've been healed. Well, now it's time to tell others. Tell us, send me an email, and let me know that you've been healed. I was in a meeting a few years ago, and a lady came up to me. I wasn't there to preach. I was there to listen and learn. I'm still a lifelong learner of the Word. I still often go to conferences not to minister, but to sit down and learn. Okay? I believe any minister is too big to sit down and listen to others. It's too big to listen to. And I, I was at the meeting, and a lady came up to me. She, went, she asked me a very strange question. She said, is it you? Is it you? I said, I don't know who you think I am, but I'm definitely me. And she said, I saw you on the TV. She said, I saw you on, she actually said the channel. She said, Revelation TV. I'm, I'm, I'm on a few channels, I'm on Revelation TV. She said, I saw you on Revelation TV and you were teaching on how to heal the sick. I said, well, I'm on Revelation TV and I do teach on healing, so it could have easily been me. And she said, well, I had my granddaughter with me for the weekend. And my granddaughter was staying with me for the weekend um, because she was so unwell that her mother needed a weekend off from looking after her because she required all this intense looking after and she had several things wrong with her and she was going to be ill for a long time. She said, so my granddaughter's asleep upstairs, I'm watching you on the TV and you're teaching how to heal the sick and how to pray for healing. She said, I then went upstairs and I prayed for my granddaughter the way you taught us to pray on the TV program and my granddaughter was instantly healed. She woke up the next morning absolutely fine, no more condition, no more problem and this is years later and she's still fine. I said, that's absolutely awesome. I said, but why didn't you let us know when it happened? Don't you think that would have encouraged us? Don't you think that would have encouraged my team? Don't you think that would have encouraged our prayer partners and the people who pay for these TV programs to go, man, these things are working, these things are having an effect? I said, I'm glad you told me today, but why didn't you email me or phone us three, four years ago when it happened and let us know? And so maybe you're sitting on a testimony today, and maybe I'm not going to meet you at a conference in a few weeks' time, so maybe just give us a call, give us an email, and let us know about your healing. Let us know about your miracle and encourage us. Do some telling. We'll make sure we tell other people. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll broadcast it. We'll let other people know your story. So where are you in this process? Here, say, maybe you're starting to say it for the first time. I believe that I'm here. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay? So here, say, do tell. Here, say, do tell. And I actually first learned this process, not about healing, but about fighting Goliath. David heard that Goliath was threatening, and he heard there was a promise and a reward for beating Goliath. So he said, I'm taking Goliath down. I'm going to beat Goliath. He started saying it. He said, I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to do this. And, I'm going to do this. and he started declaring it. And then he did it. He went and did it. He didn't just say he's going to do it. He did it. Okay? He did it the way God showed him to do it. He didn't wear Saul's armor. And he did it. And then what did he do? He told others. And other people knew. And now other people are hearing it. And they're going to fight their Goliaths. And then they fight their Goliaths. And they say it. And they do it. And they kill their Goliaths. And then they tell other people that we can beat Goliaths. And we can change our nation. And everything attacking us is going to come against us. It's not going to win in Jesus' name. And we create this wonderful circle. Hear, say, do, tell. And your telling then becomes someone else's hearing. And man, we could see the whole nation healed. We could see everyone healed. Man, that would save the government a lot of money if everyone in this nation was healed by Jesus. So why don't you tell someone? Why don't you hear the word? And maybe you haven't heard the word enough. Get my book on healing. Go on YouTube. Listen to the rest of this series on healing. Get other good teachings on healing. Hear, hear, hear. Say, say, say. Do, do, do. And then when your healing manifests and you're healed, then start telling other people. Because how many of you know those testimonies have power? We can overcome Satan by the word of our testimony. That's one of the three ways we can overcome Satan, through the word of our testimony. So we need to get involved in this and get ourselves in that cycle. And maybe you're completely healed. Maybe you need to tell someone else about Jesus' healing power. Now, meanwhile, while all this is happening, Jairus is standing there going, can we get a move on, please? My daughter's sick. We need to get to my daughter quickly. And when the people there were put forth, they went in, took her by the hand, and the maid arose. So I've, I've jumped a verse there. Verse 23, I should be reading, not 25. Verse 23, when Jesus came to the ruler's house, and he saw the minstrels and people making a noise, Okay, so now she's dead. She's dead, 
and they're having the funeral. They're, they've actually called people to make a noise. That's what the Jews would do. They would actually pay people to come and make a loud noise when someone dies. So everyone would know to be sad, would know someone had died. And he said, give place. The maid is not dead. She's asleep. And they laughed at him. Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. They laughed. They said, ah, that's, not, that's not true. You're just stupid. You don't know anything. A lot of times when you start ministering healing, when you start talking about healing, people go, you're stupid. I had that the other day. I shared about my son's healing. My son was going to be born with um, one kidney. They did scans and he only had one kidney. And we prayed. We anointed him with oil in our Bible study and in our house years ago before I was a pastor. I wasn't a pastor. We had an elder in the church. The elder anointed my wife's pregnant belly with oil. And we prayed for our unborn son. And the next scan showed he had two kidneys. Now the doctor, oh, we just must have not seen it on the other scan. You never ever once said that was a possibility. And I was telling someone about that, and they said, well, unless I can see it. And I said, well, the scan picture was there. We had the scan pictures, but uh, they, they basically fade over time. Our son's 26 years old now. The pictures are gone. He goes, well, I don't believe it. You're and he was mocking me and being very rude to me. He didn't believe. You know, and there's always going to be people who don't believe. But you know what? We keep going forward. We don't listen to the mocking. We don't listen to the scorning. We do what God tells us to do. And Jesus, when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose. And the fame went abroad to all the land. Now, I've told you about hearsay, do tell. I'm going to give you a secret bonus one today. This is a secret bonus um, truth. Put forth the people. If you're going to see miracles, you're going to have to get rid of some people. Okay, that might be literally or figuratively, I don't know. But I was teaching in, in one of our churches, we haven't actually planted the church yet, we're just having some meetings in the area, and in the middle of the meeting, some people started opposing me, they started yelling at me, telling me I was boring, telling me I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I ended the service and I said, everyone who doesn't believe Jesus Christ is the healer can just leave. And we had about 25 people in the room. After we started the service again, a few minutes later, we let everyone have a cup of tea and whatever else. We started again with maybe half that number, maybe 15 at the most, and, but we sang one song and I started preaching everyone who was sick in the room was healed. So sometimes you've got to lose some people. Jesus kicked them out. Go away. And he does that several times in the Bible. He kicks them out. He says, get out. If you don't believe there's going to be a miracle today, just go home right now because I want there to be an atmosphere of faith. And sometimes you've got to just go and say, Peter did it as well when he raised Dorcas from the dead. He sent everyone else out of the room. Jesus said, if you're having a funeral for this girl, I don't want you around. Well, I want a funeral song while I'm raising the dead because I want people of faith, people who believe in miracles to be around me. And so sometimes when you start preaching miracles, people get up and leave the church. Let them go. They can come back next week after the person's been raised from the dead, after the miracles happen and then they can come back and go oh now we're amazed now we're astounded but they missed out seeing it but that's okay we still love them that's just a biblical principle that's for free it's that little postscript at the end of my message today so listen tree.church slash healing word healing word conferences are something god told me to start last september we're going to have four of them next march they're just going to be five hours of non-stop teaching about the way i say non-stop we're going to have to stop and have lunch okay we'll have a couple of stretch your leg spaces but there's no worship there's no anything else it's just the teaching of the word on healing five hours of concentrated teaching on healing in one day on a saturday and we're going to get the word of god into you and it's going to show fruit and you're going to receive your healing there so tree.church slash healing word you can find out when and where those conferences are and we're going to have them all over the uk in the next few months and years they're going to be awesome listen we're out of time now, but don't ever forget, Jesus is on your side. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you well, and God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? I'm believing for good things to happen to you during the week, and come back next week, and we'll keep talking about lessons from the Master on healing. And I'd love for you to join us next week, and I'd love to see you there. But until then, have an awesome week. Don't forget God's for you, and believe for good things to happen to you this week. Amen. Awesome. Thank you.